بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا So as a reminder what we've been doing before the break we've been going through the book Husn al-Muslim uh, The Fortress of a Muslim and the importance of this course and these classes is that these du'as and these dhikr these reminders that we are taking are very practical and functional there are things that we need to do and say throughout the day and throughout our living life uh, so basically every time we say this dua or every time we say a dhikr uh, when wearing your clothes when taking your clothes off when going to the bathroom when entering the house when meeting your friends so many different scenarios what we're doing in fact is that we're remembering Allah and we're interacting interact, uh, interacting with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one may even ask, well, as we study the book, we'll find that sometimes the du'a on one topic, like wearing your clothes, has three or four different du'as. And you may think to yourself, why is that the case? Why are there so many du'as pertaining to one issue? Well, the thing is, number one, it's an extra chance for more reward, right? The more du'as you say, the more dhikr you say, the more reward you get. And number two, importantly, uh, is also that these du'as is tanawa fil ibadah it stops you from getting bored because if you were to say just one du'a throughout your whole life uh, for one particular uh, area or scenario you you may get bored with it it may it may become just monotonous and your um, mind and your soul may not interact with it but when you learn new du'as and new dhikr it allows for you to interact with what you're saying and you're kind of motivated and happy that you're using an, a new du'a or a new dhikr so that's why you'll find that sometimes the ulama, they gather, of, gather for us in their books more than one dua pertain, pertaining to one scenario or one situation. So in any case, we ask Allah to make these classes beneficial for us and to make us from those that who remember him in every single situation in our day and interact with the duas and the dhikr in the way that brings about a great benefit for us. So we're in the part of the book now when the author he brings forth Dua Lubs al Thawb al Jadid, the Dua for wearing a new thobe, one of the Duas for wearing a new thobe, a new clothing. So it says, Allahumma lakil hamd anta kasawtanihi, as'aluka min khaydihi, wa khayd ma suni alahu, wa a'udhu bika min sharrihi, wa sharri ma suni alahu. Awal and laftul hadith. Firstly, we're going to look, as we normally do, at the wording of the hadith from where this is taken from. So Laft al-Hadith Abu Dawood. So Imam Abu Dawood, he narrates the narration that we're going to mention. And it's from the companion Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu. Qal, this companion, he said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِذَا اسْتَجَدَّ ثَوْبًا سَمَّاهُ بِإِسْمِهِ That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, if he would wear a new thawb, a new piece of clothing, he would mention what he's wearing. إِمَّا قَمِيسًا أَوْ إِمَامَةً ثُمَّ يَقُولُ so he would say that I'm wearing this new shirt or I'm wearing this new turban or whatever it be that the Prophet ﷺ would be wearing. Allahumma lakil hamd anta kasawtanihi. Oh Allah, to you is praise. You are the one who gave me this to wear. Kasawtanihi. As'aluka min khaydihi wa khaydi ma suni alahu. I ask you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the good of this piece of clothing and from the good for the reason that it was made. And I seek refuge in you, Allah, from the evil of this piece of clothing and from the evil for what it was made. Qala Abu Nadra, one of the narrators of the hadith, he said, that the companions of the Prophet they used to that when one of them used to wear a new piece of clothing amongst the companions, amongst the Sahaba, it would be said to him, Tubli wa Allah Ta'ala. Okay, and we'll explain this in the next uh, dua that we're going to take. So, in any case, again, just to repeat the first dua that we're looking at today is Allahumma lakil hamd anta kasawtanihi as'aluka min khayrihi wa khayri ma suni alahu wa a'udhu bika min sharrihi wa sharri ma suni alahu. Tayyib. So, the first word in the hadith, Allahumma. And we mentioned before that Allahumma, it means that you are calling upon all of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you say Allahumma and you make dua, it's as though you are calling upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of the names. And it also has another meaning, which is that the meme here is a replacement of Ya. So it's as though you are saying Ya Allah, okay? It's as though you are saying Ya Allah. And that you are calling with all of Allah's names. 
طيب a quick question to yourself so we can interact just a little bit um, لك الحمد all praise is to you right لك الحمد what does this word mean we've, dis- we've explained it before in previous classes can anybody make a quick commentary of not more than a few sentences on what does it mean to say لك الحمد Allah to you is the praise is there anybody willing to have a go it exactly means praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recognizing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves to be praised because of all that which is perfect about him. And everything pertaining to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. His names, his attributes, his actions, his creation, everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does is full of perfection, beauty, wisdom, etc. And also contained within the uh, phrase, Lak alhamd, when we praise Allah, when we say alhamdulillah or lak alhamd, any of these phrases, we're also um, thinking about the fact that we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the perpetual blessings that he sends upon us there are so many blessings and as it's mentioned that even to recognize that you need to thank Allah for a blessing this also requires you to thank because when you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are increased in blessings and increased in rewards so every time you thank Allah that increase of reward and of blessing also requires for you to thank Allah Azawajal. So the issue of thanking Allah and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very comprehensive. Lak alhamd. Qawluhu anta kasawtanihi. So the next phrase, anta kasawtanihi. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are the one that provided this for me. Recognizing from the depth of one's heart that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided this piece of clothing for us without, not much, without effort on our own uh, parts and without any benefit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are the ones who are in need of this clothing and Allah is in no need of this clothing however Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided it to us with ease and he's of no need for it we are in full need of it so it's from the mercy and care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us and we should always remember those people in the world that they are suffering with from poverty nor can they get food for themselves nor can they get clothing for themselves to cover themselves in the cold winter nights. So it's a mercy upon us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, without much thought from us, without much effort from us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for us drawers upon drawers and wardrobes upon wardrobes of clothing. So anta kasawtanihi, Allah, you are the one that gave this to me. So we're recognizing from the depths of our souls and hearts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this to us. So the next time we wear a piece of clothing that we actually like, we should think about how lucky we are and how blessed we are that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us that clothing. And not to make it just a mundane thing that we put on our clothing. Rather, we say this dua and we think about how lucky we are that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this clothing. The next phrase of the dua, أَسْأَلُكَ مِنْ خَيْرِهِ وَخَيْرِ مَا سُنِيَ لَهُ أَيْ بِإِسْتِعْمَالِهِ فِطَاعَةِ رَازِقِهِ That, أَسْأَلُكَ مِنْ خَيْرِهِ Oh Allah, I ask you from the good of this clothing. And from the goodness of the purpose for what it was created or made. And one of the scholars he said, Meaning that you use this clothing that you're about to wear in the servitude of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is truly understanding that you're using something for the benefit of what it was created for. Because anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, if we use it to get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we use it to get us closer to the hereafter, then that person is actually using the item that has been given to them for the best of purposes, for the greatest of goods, which is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many people, they wear their clothing, or they drive their cars, or they live in their nice big houses, or whatever it is that they're gifted. But what is the intention that they are having behind the, the acquiring of these goods and these items. If it is as well as using them for what they are supposed to be used for, if it is as well as that, that you use these items to bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether you actually use the item in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or it's just that you are contemplating on how lucky you are that Allah is giving you these items, then they bring you close to Allah azawajal, and it gives you a huge reward. So the dua said, this part, أَسْأَلُكَ مِنْ خَيْرِهِ O oh Allah, I ask you from the goodness of it, وَخَيْرِ مَا سُنِعَ لَهُ And from the goodness of that which it was created for. And this is the mindset of the believer, that he always tries and she always tries to use what they, whatever they have been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase themselves in iman 
and increase themselves in opportunity of entering into the uh, everlasting life in Jannah. And of course, uh, from the du'a is that you asking Allah or that you you asking Allah that it protects you from the cold and it covers your uh, nakedness, and that is something which is well understood and nobody needs that to be explained. The du'a then it says, وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ شَرِّهِ وَشَرِّ مَا سُنِعَ لَهُ O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the evil of this item, this clothing, and from the evil of that which it was created for or made for. Alam ibn Thaymin, rahimahullah ta'ala, Shaykh Thaymin, Muhammad Salih ibn Thaymin, he passed away, rahimahullah, in his explanation of Riyadh al-Salihin, in his explanation of the hadith uh, 813, he says that you're seeking refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the potential evil in that clothing. How can that be? And subhanAllah, many of us don't even uh, think about it in this way. But look how the scholars, they think so holistically and so, so widely about issues. So he's saying, when you're saying that I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a particular clothing, the evil that may be within that clothing, number one, you could wear that clothing and could you le lead you to harm. Like for example, it could cause you to have an allergic reaction on your skin because you're allergic to a particular substance in, in that material. It could cause you, may Allah protect us all and all the Muslims, it could cause you when you're in the kitchen to catch fire. That piece of clothing, for whatever reason, it could catch fire. It could cause one who's wearing that clothing to feel pride and to feel haughty and thus look down upon everybody else. Look how special my clothing is and nobody else in the community can afford to wear what I'm wearing. So now this is evil because the person by wearing that clothing, they're uh, obtaining sins instead of reward. Okay. It could be a cause for further sin if it's uh, clothing which Allah doesn't like, like it's tight clothing, especially for women. So if a woman is wearing tight clothing and she goes out and the men are attracted to her, looking at her due to the beauty that she has, which is exemplary or exaggerated through the clothing she's wearing, this is now a sin for her. Every time somebody looks at her with, you know, with a glance which is not permissible, then she gets a part of that sin because she's the one who's enticing them to look at her by wearing that clothing. So when we say this dua, that Allah we seek refuge in you from the evil of this clothing and from the evil that it may have been made for uh, or may be contained within the clothing, then this is some of the meanings that Shaykh Uthaymin rahimahullah mentioned uh, pertaining to that. <coughs> Excuse me. Thirdly, ma yustafadu min al-hadith. Thirdly, what can we benefit furthermore from the hadith? Ihstihbab, alhamdulillah, and the lubs of al jadid wa nahwihi. That it's highly recommended, as we mentioned, that we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, deeply when we wear a new thawb or any kind of clothing. We try to remind ourselves how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to wear this clothing. وَقَدْ إِمْتَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ خَلْقِهِ بِهَذِي نِعْمَةِ And certainly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed reminded His creation in the Qur'an. Okay, He's reminded the creation that I have favoured you with clothing. It's a favor from me, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya Bani Adam, Qad anzalna alayka alaykum libasan yuwari sawatikum wa risha wa libasu taqwa dhalika khayrun dhalika min ayati Allah la'allahum yadhakkaroon in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh, children of Adam, whether you be male or female, certainly we have uh, sent down upon you and provided you clothing, clothing that can will we'll cover your nakedness, okay? And clothing in the spiritual sense, sense which gives you taqwa and that is, the, and that is better for you and from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you may remember. So not only is Allah reminding us about the physical clothing, which is the, the main idea, but He's also reminding us that there's a spiritual clothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to also, that we clothe our souls and we beautify our souls through the worship of Allah Azawajal and through the belief of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. طيب, when we dress in our clothing, we have to ensure that when we dress, we do so in a way that is pleasing to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So we need to learn what is allowed for us to dress in and what is not allowed for us to dress in. What should we avoid and what we don't have to avoid. Avoid. So we have to be very careful that the fashion industry doesn't pollute our minds and our way of thinking. As we know, the fashion industry, it's something which is highly influenced by the whisperings of shaitan and the people who serve shaitan. Um, most of the clothing is made in a tight manner 
is made in a manner where the genders are mixed. Uh, men have started to look like women now due to wearing tight clothing. And women are dressing in ways which doesn't please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we have to be extremely uh, careful not to fall victim to the fashion industry. So when we dress, uh, we should always remind ourselves that, look, this is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I shouldn't use it to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is giving me bounties upon bounties. Let me keep it halal so that not only do I cover myself, but I'm also getting rewarded by Allah azawajal. So in the hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi, the Prophet sallallahu said, Inna Allah yuhibbu an yara athara ni'matahu ala abdihi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see the effects of his blessings upon his servant. So when you dress nicely and in a halal way, this pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because Allah is seeing you wearing the gifts that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. So it's good for us to dress in a nice way, but as long as we keep it within, within the halal. And we should dress up for those that we are supposed to dress up for. Like for example, in the sunan of Bayhaqi al-Bayhaqi al-Kubra, and the Musannaf of Ibn Abi Shayba, will have mercy upon them. Ikrama, he narrates from Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, Inni uhibbu an atazayan lil mar'ati. I, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, the cousin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, Verily, certainly, I like to dress up for my woman. Kama uhibbu an tatazayan li al mar'a. I like to dress up for the woman as I like for the woman to dress up for me. So this is something that married couples after a while, after a few years have passed, they forget that they should be doing for one another. They should be wearing their best clothes in front of one another. They should always try to impress one another from time to time with their good clothing and the way that they dress rather than trying to impress the people on social media who really don't care about you and most of what you see in social media is not real anyway. It's all fake with filters and people that uh, present themselves in a happy manner and a relaxed manner. In most cases, that's not their reality in life. So going back to the point that we should dress in a halal manner and we should dress to impress those that are close to us, not those that are far away from us and on social media, etc. Also pertaining to these points is that we should not be um, addicted to clothing in the sense that, don't forget, it's just clothing. It's just there to cover our, uh, our nakedness, right? Why are we making it more than that? We should live in reality, not live in these fake realities like the metaverse. We need to keep grounded and think in logical ways and mature ways, which is that it's only clothing. Why are we going to the extremes having to spend so much money over clothing? Why is it that when a new piece of clothing comes out, a new design, all they've done on the Nike logo, they've just changed it slightly. All they've done in the dress that the sister wants to wear is they've just changed the design very so, ever so slightly. And then we have to go out and buy that new clothing and spend so much money when we already have so many items in our cupboards and closets, no. We shouldn't be of that mentality. Rather, we need to remind ourselves that we wear out of need and we wear because we, into, we want to look good for ourselves and good for those that we're allowed to show our beauty and uh, what's beauty for a male, handsomeness too, okay, which is our, our family and our spouses, not for the largest society. We're not slaves to the consumer uh, market, to the consumer uh, mechanisms. طيب. The next dua also pertaining to wearing clothing a dua liman labisa thawban jadid dua for the one uh, who you see is wearing uh, new clothing so what do you say to them tubli wa yukhlifu Allah ta'ala so this is taken from the first hadith that we mentioned which I'll re re just uh, restate and Abi Sa'id al-Khudri Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu he said qal that the Prophet that the Prophet when he would wear new clothing, he would mention it by its name, whether it's a shirt or whether it's a turban, etc. And he would say, Allahumma oh lakalhamd, Allah to you is all praise. Anta kasawtanihi, you are the one who provided this and clothed me with it. As aluka min khayrihi wa khayri ma suni alahu. I ask you for, for the goodness of it and for good, for the goodness of that which it was created for. And I seek refuge in you from the evil of it and from the evil of that which it was created for. So this is the extra part that we're going to look at now. One of the companions, he said, Abu Nadra, فكان أصحاب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم The companions of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, they used to, If one of them was found to be wearing new clothing amongst them, it would be said to that person, 
Tubli wa yukhlifullah ta'ala. Okay, it will be said to them, Tubli wa yukhlifullah ta'ala. And this is in the wording of the hadith master Abi Dawood. So let's have a look at what this wording means. Tubli, it means min al ibla, bima'na al ikhlaq. Okay, it means that uh, wear the clothing until it becomes old and worn out. Wahada dua lillah bis al thawbi an yu'ammar, wa yalbasa al kathawb hatta yubla. And it's a dua for the person that they have a long life and they wear the clothing for a long time until the clothing becomes worn out. Okay, so it basically means that the person has a long life. وقوله ويخلف الله تعالى أي يبدلك يبدلك بعد الذهاب حد الثوب ويعوضك عنه ده الله سبحانه وتعالى when you say ويخلف الله تعالى you're saying that Allah سبحانه وتعالى may he replace for you once this thobe or this clothing has been worn out may he replace it for you with another okay والمقصود هو دعاء بطول الحياة as we said, and the intent is that the person you are making dua for them, that they have a long life. ما يستفاد من الحديث? What do we benefit from the hadith? مشروعية قول حد الدعاء للمسلم إذا لبس شيئا جديد لما في ذلك من أشعة المحبة بين المسلمين. The encouragement from the Sharia for us to say this type of dua to a Muslim when they when we see them wearing new clothing. Why? Because it contains within the wordings and within the action of making this kind of dua it contains the spreading of love between the muslims and this is something which is a beautiful principle that in islam we're supposed to spread love amongst the believers right not cause each other to be away from us rather we want to bring the muslims close to us by having good character towards them by dealing with muslims male and female uh, poor and rich, all types of colors, all types of sizes, it doesn't matter. As long as they are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as they are on, the, are on the same journey as you towards Jannah, as long as they are people of Tawheed and Sunnah, we want to bring them close to us and we want to honor them with good manners and good character, good words. So this dua that we mentioned is from that and it's a beautiful principle. Why? Apart from spreading love, it saves you from being jealous. And jealousy is something which overtakes the soul at times, that sometimes you see somebody uh, driving a nice car, living in a nice house, wearing nice clothing that you can't afford, and it may cause you to have jealousy. But if you're somebody that says these type of du'as and understands the meanings therein, you're going to be truly happy for that person, and you're going to uh, be happy that Allah chose for them to have the wealth that they have and the clothing that they have, rather than being jealous and uh, you know burning inside, which is something horrible to do. So it's a way of training the soul to be happy for other Muslims when we say du'as like the one that we are taking. And we remind ourselves that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rich and generous and nothing decreases from his wealth and his bounty. Even if he was to give every building on the face of earth, on, on the face of this earth as much as they wanted, it wouldn't decrease uh, even like if you were to dip your finger into an ocean. What do you get from the ocean on your finger? A drop. And to Allah is the highest example, it wouldn't even increase that much from the majesty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is enough to go around. There's no need for people to be jealous of one another. Okay, all we need to do if we want something that we see that somebody else is wearing, we make dua to Allah and we try to obtain it in a halal way. So spreading love between Muslims and not being jealous of one another and not trying to harm one another is something which is an easy thing to do if we train ourselves upon it. And it's something which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And it's something which increases our iman. As the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, famous hadith, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه That none of you will have true faith until you love for your brother or sister that which you love for yourself. So we love good for ourselves, right? We love for ourselves to be happy and to be treated well. That's how we should also treat other Muslims in a happy and respectful and positive manner. طيب. Another point that we take from this hadith, this part of the hadith that we are looking at. المسلم اللبيب هو الذي يقصد بعمله وجه الله ويحول العادة إلى الإبادة فيقصد بلبس الثوب الجديد أو غيره إظهار أثارة نعمة الله عليه. So the intelligent Muslim is the one that when he, uh, he or she intends a matter, okay, they change the mundane actions into acts of worship. So for example, wearing a piece of clothing, it's a mundane action, 
right? But you can change it into an act of worship. Why? Because you choose to wear halal clothing and stay away from that which is haram. When you wear the clothing, you choose to wear that which, or you choose to uh, reflect upon the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. So you're changing the mundane act into an act of worship. When you see somebody wearing new clothing, instead of just saying, wow, that's really beautiful, that's amazing, you look so handsome or so pretty, you make this dua for the person and it increases you in the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, and also from that is that you wear the clothing to show to Allah azza wa jal that you are wearing the gifts that He has provided. As we mentioned in the hadith, in Allah ta'ala yuhibuni an yara athar ni'matihi ala abdihi, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to see the effects of the bounties that He has given upon His slaves, right? So when you dress properly, it, it's a way of showing to Allah جل, and it's a way of um, celebrating the bounties that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. طيب. We'll move on to another dua which is similar uh, that you say to somebody when they wear new clothing. Ilbas jadidan wa ish hamidan wa mut shadidan. Quite rhyming, easy to memorize, inshallah. And remember, if there's too many du'as and it's difficult for you to memorize, it doesn't matter because these notes that you're making or these benefits that you're understanding from the dhikr and the, and the du'as, there will be a point in your life when you come to memorize them. And there will be a point in your life when you teach your spouses, you teach your children, and you start to teach those who are close to you. So, ilbas jadidan wa ish hamidan wa mut shahidan. My children used to laugh at me because I used to say wa mut shadidan. And shadid means... Uh, <laughs> severe so die in a severe way instead of saying mut die as a shaheed I used to make the mistake and they used to correct me all the time so anyway ilbas jadidan wa ish hamidun wa mut shaheedan what does it mean awwalan lafzul hadith an ibn umar radiyallahu anhu from the great companion ibn umar radiyallahu anhuma anna rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ra'a ala umar qameesan abyad faqal that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw once upon umar who was wearing a white clothing and he said to him is this clothing that you are wearing is it just newly washed is it just washed or is it a new piece of clothing so Umar he said rather O messenger of Allah it is washed and the Prophet ﷺ said to him ilbas jadidan wa ish hamidan wa mut shahidan that ilbas uh, jadidan okay wear new clothing and live in an honorable way and die as a martyr so the Prophet ﷺ is saying to Umar عنه, this dua in a way of trying to say to him I wish for you that you will wear new clothing so this dua we say when we see somebody wearing new clothing we say to them this dua okay okay ilbas jadid wa ish hamid wa mut shaheed so ilbas jadid wear, uh, wear new clothing you're making dua for the person that they always get to wear the best of clothing new clothing or clean clothing and then ish hamid live in an honorable way ay hamidan li rabbika ala ni'mihi meaning that you will live in a way where you're always praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessings wa mahmudan inda rabbika bi taqwahu and you are praised in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to you having taqwa Closeness to Allah Azawajal, God consciousness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Wa in the nas bil ihsan ilayhim, and you are praised amongst the people because you interact with them in the best of ways. Okay. So, a quick side point: people they don't care too much in reality about how you dress. That's not the everlasting effect that stays with them. If they see you wearing nice clothing, they'll forget that very quickly that they saw you wearing nice clothing. Whereas, however, if you interact with people in a good manner, that is what gives them a good impression of you and that is what stays in their minds and hearts for a longer period of time they only care so much about how you dress so ish hamidan it means that you live in an honorable manner by being close to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizing his bounties upon you worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and interacting with the creation in the best of ways wa mut shahidan and die as a martyr die as a martyr this is part of the dua that you make for the believer why because um, being a shaheed has a very high status in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does it mean to be shaheed, a martyr? Qal ibn Mandur, a shaheed fil asl man qutila mujahidan fi sabilillah. The shaheed, in essence, in foundation, meaning 
is the one that is killed striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fighting in the path of Allah جل, protecting the Muslims in the Muslim lands and the religion of Islam and he's given the name of being a shaheed because this person who dies in the manner uh, striving in the path of Allah جل, this person the angels they give witness to the fact that this person died and is now in Jannah okay and it has other meanings um, but what we take from it in reality is that when you make this kind of dua for a person you are asking them to have the highest of rewards you are asking them for them to be in the highest levels of Jannah because from the highest levels of Jannah is for the martyr the one that gave up everything for the sake of Islam for the sake of protecting the Muslims for the sake of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that is from the highest of levels in Jannah so when you make this dua you're asking that the person that you're making a dua for also reaches that high level in Jannah and it also teaches us that we should have high aspirations that we shouldn't be a people that just live a life like a donkey when the donkey dies not too many people care that it died rather we want to leave an effect upon the Muslim Ummah that we want to always be busy trying to serve Islam and serve the Ummah so that when we pass away we leave behind us a legacy not for that people can praise us but so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with us okay so we should have high aspirations and we should bring our children up upon high aspirations in serving Islam what we benefit from this hadith also is the great beautiful nature of the Prophet his beautiful character and the Prophet was very humble with his companions and the Prophet would always make dua in so many different ways to his companions for his companions that they have the best of this world and the best of the hereafter and this is how the Muslim should be always making dua for the believers that they are benefited in this life and hereafter your tongue should be busy with that all the time Jazakallahu khair, barakallahu feeka, zadakallahu khair, ahsanallahu alayka so many duas that we say and we shouldn't just say them without meaning them we should try to mean them when we say them uh, Ibn al-Arabi, one of the scholars, he says وَيُخَرَجْ مِنْ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ مَا يَدُلُّ عَنَ الزُّهُدْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْعِبَادَ لَيْسَ بِالْلِبَاسِ الْخَشْنِ وَالْوَسَخْ لَيْسَ بِالْلِبَاسِ الْخَشْنِ الْوَسَخْ مِنْ الْثِيَابِ So Ibn al-Arabi, he makes an important point, may Allah have mercy upon him. He says we extract from this hadith that which alludes to and teaches us that zuhud, zuhud is something which is um, important is abstinence of the world meaning that you don't love this worldly life it doesn't occupy your heart and your soul so this uh, Imam Ibn Arabi he's reminding us an important point he's saying that zuhud this abstinence which you are supposed to have uh, you know detachment from the world it doesn't mean that you should wear clothing which is not nice clothing which is coarse and rough okay because in the Prophet ﷺ, there is the best of examples and here's the Prophet ﷺ making dua for people to wear new clothing and good clothing so if it was the case that wearing uh, you know coarse clothing and clothing of not good material clothing which is worn out if that was something which was recommended the Prophet ﷺ would have recommended it for us but rather zuhud this abstinence from the dunya this being detached from the dunya is that it doesn't settle in your heart okay whether you have the wealth or you don't have the wealth it's not going to affect your journey to Allah it's not going to depress you because your base level of happiness is already there your base level of happiness is that you are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you are happy in being a believer and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so whether you have the worldly goods or you don't have them it doesn't affect you too much okay because you're happy in your journey already to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala طيب, inshallah I think we'll stop there inshallah